health promotion programs. You realize uh, we have moved a long way from how to implement uh, a, a health promotion uh, uh, up to uh, how to evaluate uh, these and monitor these evaluation programs. And uh, we, need, we need to understand monitoring first. Now, monitoring is defined as a concurrent process of tracking implementations of activities of a health program or project and attaining its planned outputs. So it is concurrent, meaning uh, you, as you are implementing your health promotion proje pro project, uh, you are continuously also trying to monitor. You are trying to track how the activities are being implemented. And most times you try and track this by getting feedback from the community. And uh, you're able to monitor whether these particular activities are being implemented according to uh, how the objective of your particular health promotion is. Whereas when you're talking about evaluation, you're looking at a systematic and objective assessment of an ongoing or complete project, program or policy, including design, implementation, and results. So sometimes uh, you may look at uh, evaluation when it is ongoing, but also sometimes you may look at it uh, when it is complete. Now, we will not be able to go into the nitty gritties of evaluation because I, I know that uh, in, in, it may be a module somewhere else. But in this, in this particular uh, module, we just want to have a brief uh, idea of uh, how we can actually be able to monitor and evaluate our health promotion and communication uh, programs in uh, reproductive health. So some of the functions of monitoring include uh, gathering feedback uh, from participants. So after you've delivered your health communication, or your health education uh, if a message, you should be able to gather feedback from the participants. I was just telling you the last time that uh, the same way I gather some feedback from you after the lecture. For example, do we have any other questions? For example, uh, do you have any comments on the previous uh, discussion? Uh, what do you think uh, we need to adjust to our message? Uh, what other issues do you think uh, affect your community uh, that we should be able to give you information about in our next meeting. So getting, being able to get some of these feedbacks will help you to improve the kind of message uh, that you're going to uh, give out to your community in the next, in the next uh, health promotion program. And uh, that is why we're saying it has a function, monitoring has a function of uh, gathering feedback from participants. But also it helps us collect data and collecting data can be through qualitative or quantitative methods. And coll collecting data includes uh, what are the, uh, the, the, the numbers of people who have attended this, uh, what age are they, uh, what sex are they, uh, what uh, education level are they, but also uh, them being able to give you information on the myths, eh? on, on the myths or the, the communities, uh, uh, community beliefs and, and attitudes and values. So you are able to collect a variety of data uh, using monitoring. But also you are able to observe the implementation of activities of a project, which activity is being implemented and which one is not being uh, implemented. And our monitoring also helps us analyze the contextual uh, changes. So you will be able to understand what has happened uh, what is the contextual or what is the immediate uh, changes that are occurring as a result of implementing uh, a health promotion program. Uh, but also it helps you provide early warning signs uh, or all the, 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 all, all systems of uh, uh, potential challenges. So you will be able to realize that uh, there is going to be a challenge that the community is going to reject the kind of message you're going to uh, uh, you, you're going to preach out to them. And therefore, through this monitoring, you can then be able to readjust your, uh, your, your, your mode of, 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 of all the kind of message that you're going to give the community uh, because you've identified or you have been able to use monitoring 
to realize uh, an early warning sign in there. And uh, we want to look at what we call the monitoring process and uh, what it means. So the, the monitoring process is a continuous uh, cycle that involves constant feedback. Yeah? So it is continuous until the, the end of the project. And uh, it involves constant feedback. So you, you continuously monitor your health promotion process, pro program until uh, its end. Yet uh, you also continue to have constant feedback uh, from those uh, you're offering that message to. And there are four steps in, in this monitoring uh, process. One is collecting and analyzing data. Uh, the first step in the monitoring process is measuring, uh, recording, collecting data with emphasis on specific indicators and, analy and analyzing that data on actual implementation of the project. So you realize that as you're monitoring, uh, the first major step is that you're able to collect information and uh, analyze it. And you collect this information uh, through focus group discussions, uh, through interviews, and, and, and so forth. So you're able to go and inf interview uh, the clients who attended uh, your health promotion or your health education activity. And you're able to get feedback from them. You're able to interview these mothers you were able to gather them in a focus group discussion and uh, you will be able to, to get information. You're also able to use key uh, informats and uh, you'll be able to interview the stakeholders, uh, the local council ones, the, the health facility in charges, and they will be able to give you information uh, that you need in your monitoring process. And uh, the second one is detecting deviations from the plan. So following data analysis, after you've analyzed, you've collected and analyzed your data, you will be able to uh, detect if there are any uh, deviations from the plan in and uh, identify and communicate to the program managers. So uh, that is one of the st key steps in monitoring. And the third key step is diagonizing causes for deviations. So you should be able to detect why did this deviate? Why did this, uh, uh, what are the main causes? So one of the main causes might be that you do not have uh, uh, technical people uh, in, in, in trying to implement uh, your health promotion activity. Or possibly you have logistical uh, challenges. Or possibly uh, your, pro, your, your, your project had the wrong audience. So instead of, uh, you, you, you are targeting probably youth who are between this age and you realize that uh, uh, during the, the, the deviation is that, uh, that you, did not, uh, you, 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 you did not cover your target uh, audience. So the diagnosis for the cause of deviation could be that the mobilization was done using elderly people and therefore you did not get your youth. So if this is done, if this analysis of the cause of deviation is done, then uh, it can take you into the fourth, the fourth step of taking a corrective action. And this corrective action are a plan taken to get rid of the deviation and implementation of these plans to achieve the desired goal. So you will be able to then uh, put into those strategies uh, that can help you uh, uh, recorrect uh, in order to achieve the planned goal uh, that you had uh, desired as, as a project. And then uh, we, that, so that, uh, that, that is uh, the brief we need to understand about uh, monitoring. So we want to look at evaluation. So therefore evaluation uh, is a systematic and uh, objective assessment of an ongoing or complete project program or policy, including design implementation and results. And uh, there are different uses of evaluation. What, one is to assess the changes in the target group, uh, changes in risk behavior, that is uh, for, for example. Two is to assess the extent to which objectives have been met. So it is the process of determining uh, the effectiveness of the program. So you want to know uh, how far you have achieved the objectives. 
this is the evaluation process. So sometimes you may have a midterm evaluation and, and, and so forth. And uh, you'll be able to track uh, whether the process of determining uh, or the process of the effectiveness of your, of your program is there. Three is to review the implementation of the program, identify problems and recommend unnecessary revisions of the program. So in evaluation, uh, you can be able to uh, evaluate the services that are provided and you can be able to recommend uh, necess necessities of revision of these programs. Four is to assess our progress towards uh, desired health status or at national or state level and identify reasons for the gap. So you will be able to, 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 to clearly understand uh, how far you, your health status, both at a national, but also at a state level or at a provincial level uh, are. Uh, if your desired health status outcome was to have 100% deliveries at a health facility, then uh, through your project uh, evaluation, if you realize you are at 85, then you can be able to understand that uh, the desired level is 95, but uh, we are still here at 85. And therefore, you should be able to have reasons for the gap. And uh, if any, uh, you should be able to uh, uh, redesign or uh, recommend key uh, interventions. So the fifth one is evaluation contributes towards better health planning. Uh, this we all understand that uh, through having information, uh, we can be able to plan uh, better in our health systems. So they also help us uh, document results achieved by a project uh, that is being funded by a donor. So if there are donor agencies that are funding some of these projects, you should be able to document results and uh, in, in, in documentation, you realize you may be able to convince a donor uh, to offer you more funding. The seventh one is to know whether desired health outcomes are being achieved and identify remedial measures. So remedial measures meaning that uh, uh, you're going to have to redo or you're, 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 you're planning to have uh, interventions uh, that can then be able to uh, 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 add on the current intervention that had been done because you're able to uh, know whether your desired outcomes were achieved or not. Eighth is to improve health program and the health infrastructure. Ninth is to allocate uh, resources in the current fu uh, or future programs. Ten is to track the outcomes and impacts of programs or projects at the larger population level as opposed to the program or project level. So it, outcomes are short, term, uh, are short term or intermediate results obtained by the, the program uh, through the execution of activities, whereas uh, the impact is the long term effect. So an impact may be change in the health status. This can be through special studies with wide district, regional, or national coverage. So uh, in, in evaluation, tracking outcomes, uh, if uh, your physical, you're, you're implementing a physical activity, uh, improvement on, on physical activity of, of, of your community project, uh, your short term through your evaluation, you should be able to look at uh, what are some of the outcomes. Possibly the outcomes could be that uh, there are reduced number of people uh, visiting uh, health facilities with the cardiovascular illnesses. But also uh, we would look at uh, uh, the reduction in, uh, in, 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 in weight or, or, best, or best cases in the community. But also that physical activity uh, uh, program could have other, other outcomes that are short term, uh, short term. But in the long run, you would realize that uh, uh, there is actually a change in the health status in that community. So that is how uh, that number 10 uh, is explaining on uh, uh, tracking of outcomes and impacts. 
And uh, the 11th uh, or the last uh, use of, of uh, evaluation is to render health activities more relevant, uh, more efficient and more effective. So through evaluation, uh, you can be able to make these uh, activities relevant and uh, relevant uh, meaning through uh, being able to give the positive side of these activities, but also more efficient uh, by after try by by trying to look at what some of the challenges or deviations are, and you make them more effective uh, by addressing these particular challenges that may be faced. So we want to look at some of the types of evaluation, and uh, my focus is on evaluation. Uh, uh, because uh, we understand that in health, in, in, in health uh, behavior promotion and uh, 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 communication, uh, after you have designed your type of message, uh, you should be able to pay critical attention uh, into this. So uh, there is what we call formative evaluation. Uh, this formative evaluation uh, evaluates a program during development in order to make early improvements. So this is uh, an intervention that is at development stage, formative evaluation, meaning it is still at the inception of uh, that program. So it also helps to refine or improve a program. So it ensures that programs or program activity is feasible, is appropriate and acceptable before it is fully implemented and it is usually conducted when a new program or activity being developed or when an existing one is being adopted or modified. So for a new program or a program that is being uh, uh, adopted after its existence, it is very key that uh, you evaluate it uh, at the early moments to be able to uh, make early improvements to, to that particular uh, uh, project. So, uh, formative evaluation is used uh, when starting a new program to assist in the early phases of program development for behavior change projects and community uh, engaged projects. Examples of formative evaluation, we would want to look at how well is the program being delivered? So these are some of the questions you're asking as you're trying to evaluate this project. What strategies can we use uh, to improve this program? This is now, these are formative uh, questions that you're asking in uh, your program evaluation. Another type of evaluation is what we call summative evaluation. And this provides information on, on program effectiveness, and it is conducted after the completion of the program uh, design. Uh, and we earlier said that evaluation is systematic, but it can also be done on a, an ongoing or completed program. So the one that is done at the beginning is formative, but the one that is done at the end is summative, coming from the word summary meaning that the project has been completed and now you're doing a summative description. And the use is that it helps to decide whether to continue and or expand such a program. So examples of summative evaluation, uh, they should, uh, should funding continue for this program? See, for, uh, uh, that is one of the questions you, you, you ask in, in a summative uh, in a summative. Uh, evaluation that should fundings continue for this program or should service ex services expand to other after school program in the community so if you were implementing a program at the school now the question you're asking that should this program then expand to after school so those after individuals have left school and, and they're in their homes whether this pro project uh, should uh, expand to that level. And uh, uh, the fourth one is what, the third one is what we call process uh, or implementation evaluation. So this determines whether program activities have been implemented 
as uh, as a as a intended so the results of a process evaluation will strengthen your ability to report on your program and use information to improve future activities it also allows you to track info program information related to who what when and where questions so uh, this process uh, implementation is actually looking at implementation uh, that as the project is being uh, implemented that you are also uh, evaluating it so some of the questions you ask is to whom did you direct program efforts so in other words they are asking uh, who your beneficiaries are and uh, the, what types and how many target mem population members received uh, sexually transmitted services so these are some of the questions in the pro in, in the process uh, evaluation that you're asking. What has your program done? For example, did the program staff distribute uh, the sexually transmitted disease screening protocols to clinics? For example, the, ST, the HIV kits, the self-testing kits. Did the medical staff counsel, screen, and appropriately treat clinical patients for sexually transmitted diseases how many professional development workshops were provided for disease intervention specialists on protocols for interviewing clients and conducting case management so these are some of the monitoring and evaluation that you would be doing uh, as what we call process uh, evaluation so these are still some of the questions did the program staff collaborate with the stakeholders or other partners in designing a screening program when did your program activities take place how many days after interviewing index cases were contacts treated with prophylaxis where did your program activities take place where was outreach conducted to reach the target Population. These are process questions that you're asking to evaluate your program. Your, your program. Uh, the fourth is what we call the outcome or the effectiveness evaluation. And this measures programs' effects in the target population by assessing the progress in the outcomes or outcome objective that the program is to achieve. Outcome evaluation reflects the intended changes in the program so if your program was uh, giving people knowledge awareness uh, changing their attitudes uh, imparting skills to them and behavior as well as the potential changes so you should be able to uh, describe uh, the potential changes that have occurred uh, in this outcome uh, evaluation if uh, the program's objective was to increase knowledge among women on uh, maybe uh, maternal uh, services. Then you should be able to uh, ask whether uh, this information was given to the target group. So some of the questions uh, this outcome evaluation addresses are, uh, were medical providers who received intensive STD training more likely to effectively counsel, screen, and treat patients than those who did not. So you want to assess whether people who were trained were treating people more than those who were not. Mothers who were given knowledge on antenatal care, were they doing better than those who did not have knowledge? Mothers who were coming for health facility delivery, we are very doing better than those who we are not. So you are assessing uh, what the status quo was, but also what the status quo is meant to be. So did the implementation of sexually transmitted diseases in the CBO uh, result in changes in knowledge? This among the members of the target group. So you're asking, this program was implemented. Was there an improvement in the knowledge or attitude and skills of these individuals? Did the program have any an in intended or beneficial or adverse effect on the target population? 
So these are some of the outcome questions uh, you should be asking. And they continue up to about eight, up to about nine. That the, the benefits of the activity justify uh, continued allocation of the resources. Was there any change in intention to use condoms among uh, men who engage in high risk uh, behaviors? So all these are questions uh, that you should be uh, able to ask in your output uh, level. Uh, the fourth is what we call the impact evaluation. And this assesses program effectiveness in achieving its ultimate goals. So it focuses on long-term uh, sustained changes as a result of program activities, both positive and negative, or intended and unintended. So uses of impact evaluation uh, to influence policy, uh, to see impact in longitudinal studies with comparison groups. So this is looking at a long-term uh, uh, changes as we discuss uh, in impact. So you're trying to look at a long-term uh, change and you ask uh, changes that have occurred. So you would ask questions such as, what effects would program participants miss out on without this program? Secondly, you would ask what changes in your program participants' behavior are attributable to your program. So uh, these are some of the uh, very uh, important questions uh, as you evaluate uh, using impact evaluation. And uh, that is, that is uh, how majorly far uh, the types of, of evaluation are. And largely, uh, that is what, for this particular module, uh, monitoring and evaluation, uh, the, the, the slide should look at. But there are just some other additional information uh, that we can go through uh, as I summarize uh, this particular uh, issue here. So uh, monitoring and evaluation of health programs are important to ensure that programs are effective, efficient, and achieving their intended goals as we discussed as uh, the advantages of uh, evaluation. Evaluation can help identify areas of improvement, assess the impact of interventions, and provide evidence for decision making. And uh, uh, the, the types are just here, uh, where we're looking about process, uh, we're looking about process, outcome, impact, and uh, there's an aspect of economic, but these are just uh, regarding cost effectiveness. And uh, these are some of the different scholars uh, giving uh, information there. So what do you have to consider uh, for an effective evaluation and monitoring process? It should be aligned with clear goals and objectives. Uh, what do you want to find out? We want to find out the, the, the improvement in knowledge, attitude, and belief of this community. So you should be able to have that goal and the objectives uh, that you uh, should be able to uh, go and do uh, a, a, an evaluation and monitoring. But you, these objectives must be clear and uh, they should be smart. So it also requires an uh, adequate resource such as funding, staff and expertise. Uh, the people should be knowledgeable and the money should be there to implement this uh, M&E. Uh, it should be appropriate to the program's goals and and objectives and context. So you cannot just go and do an evaluation for a project uh, that you are not uh, well versed with or that is not in line with uh, the project goals. And uh, it should take into account the ethical considerations such as privacy, confidentiality, and if people you want to ask them these questions, you should be able to be confidential with their uh, information. Sometimes monitoring involves pinning some of your staff, so you should be able to uh, treat it with privacy and at most uh, uh, and at most uh, uh, confidentiality. Uh, so uh, timely and transport report, transparent reporting, uh, some of the considerations you should also make meaning the evaluation and monitoring results should be reported in timely 
and in a very transparent manner because you should include the participants, the funders and the partners in coming to uh, be able to evaluate these uh, reports from, from you. So uh, there are some challenges in health promotion uh, uh, when you when you when you're going to do these uh, these uh, particular uh, health promotion uh, monitoring and, and evaluation in health promotion. So some of the challenges and opportunities could be uh, you have to do ethical considerations. Implementation challenges are there, but there are also emerging trends and innovations in health promotion today. And uh, it is important that uh, you take this into consideration. For example, programs that involve screening or testing for health conditions may raise issues uh, related to informed consent and confidentiality. So you should be able to go and evaluate. Uh, if you're going to monitor and evaluate such programs, uh, the issues that may arise are issues of informed consent. And uh, you should be able to ask a client whether they can voluntarily uh, answer the questions you intend to, to ask. So programs that involve incentives or rewards for behavior change may raise questions about coercion and fairness. So if you have a project you're implementing uh, where you reward people, uh, you give them incentives. So questions of aren't you coercing these people uh, may come up as some of the monitoring and evaluation uh, issues that uh, arise. And the implementation uh, issues may include uh, the changing priorities, but also like uh, we, we studied in, in, in the various aspects, there may be cultural or linguistic uh, programs that uh, uh, problems that may accrue as a result of having people uh, from different backgrounds. And the emerging trends that we are seeing today with a lot of innovations, uh, so this may uh, give you an opportunity to be able to, to interact or have a, an other different target groups, but uh, it may also be a challenge because uh, some of the target groups that are not well versed with the, with the uh, emerging trends or innovations like technology may struggle uh, to try so much to offer uh, feedback to you. So uh, that is that, and uh, we say that effective health promotion programs require considerations of ethical issues and uh, effective uh, implementation, implementation strategies, meaning uh, you must be able to understand some of the ethical issues of privacy and uh, confidentiality, but also like we said with uh, uh, health education, there are some strategies you should be able to use uh, in implementing uh, these strategies or implementing your monitoring and evaluation. So uh, up to that, I think concludes uh, our presentation for today, but also our lecture for today. And uh, there's only one more other aspect uh, that I would want us to handle. And uh, that is, I think, uh, one practical or case study of a health promotion uh, and uh, uh, health promotion activity and, uh, uh, and and I think one uh, practical aspect of uh, a case study of, of how to design a health promotion so that we can be able to end the module. And I'm thinking that uh, we could actually end the module by tomorrow uh, if we can have one lecture possibly from from 9 from 9 a.m up to about a 10 30 or just one hour around there so do we have any questions regarding m and e or any questions regarding uh, social uh, marketing or any other questions that uh, we could have or any uh, comment before we can end this particular lecture because uh, that is uh, where we are ending for today.